You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. As uh, always, James, it's uh, great to have you here at BRFM. Yeah, good evening, Daniel. Thank you for, for inviting me back once again. So I was wondering if you could do a little introduction on the uh, Kent County Council Community Wardens first. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, well, community wardens um, are people who aim to improve the life of people in Kent so that they can live safely and independently in the neighbourhood's communities. Um, we're distinctly different from the police officers and the police community support officers, uh, the PTSOs, as we're employed by KCC, that's Kent County Council, and uh, we have no police powers. Um, we do, however, provide a visible uniform presence and are regarded as the focal point for inquiries in the community on any topic. If I don't have the answer myself, I would advise on further points of inquiry um, and we befriend the elderly and vulnerable, vulnerable members of the community who may otherwise feel alone or friendless. And uh, I know one of the things that uh, is often asked and uh, you like to cover is uh, all about how listeners can find out uh, who their community warden is, James. Yes, indeed. Um, the easiest way is to go through the website, which is www.kent.gov.uk forward slash community wardens. Um, there's three community wardens who cover the Isle of Sheppey. There's myself in Laysdown and Warden, uh, Cheryl Hendry, who covers Minster, and David Osborne, who covers Sheer- uh, Sheerness. Um, there's also two community wardens in the Swell District who are based off the island. There's Nick Mayett in Kemsey and Iwade and Georgina Springle in Newington. Um, we do have a supervisor, it's uh, Paul Crisp, and he's based jointly at the Swell Community Safety Unit at the Swell by Council Officers in Sittingbourne and the Swell Bridge Partnership in Sheerness. So, James, do you work alongside the police or are you uh, independent? Well, I, I, I uh, did mention the uh, the police earlier, and um, but it's important to remember that we are independent from the police, although we do work closely with them, because many of the items that we deal with are also matters of criminal law. I mean, for example, things like fly tipping, graffiti, vandalism, and uh, antisocial behaviour. Um, also uh, today, there are some aspects I'd like to cover, which is uh, um, covering Road Safety Week, uh, which is the 19th to 25th of November, that's in a couple of weeks' time. Um, it's ba- basically just giving out some advice um, that seems appropriate for the theme of the week. And so this is one that's certainly becoming uh, more relevant uh, as those nights draw in, and uh, it's uh, how can you make yourself more visible when on an unlit uh, road, James? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I m- mentioned earlier about the road safety week. I mean, I mean this, this is some of the things that we're we're trying to get out to try, try and reduce uh, road casualties. Um, but make yourself more visible on an unlit road. Um, the simple answer is wear bright clothing. Um, a lot of warm clothing today is manufactured in dark sober colours, your blues, your blacks, sometimes your dark, your dark reds, maroons. Um, it's fine for motorists, but not necessarily for pedestrians. Um, I mean, my, my, my work fleece is dark green. It's lovely and warm, but yeah, it can't, can't really be seen that well, uh, even though it does have fluorescent bands around it. Um, so preferably you need to wear a bright reflective coat and or leggings. Um, th- if this isn't done, as a minimum, consider a reflective sash over your outer garments. I mean, e- even even uh, you, you can go, go, and, go and get some wristbands, uh, just, not wristbands, armbands, just, just something to put around you, just something to reflect some light off you, just, just to give motorists an idea that you're there. Secondly, carry a torch. Um, powerful torches are nowadays small and reasonably lightweight. Many of them are of LED design, which are reliable, extremely bright, and the light they can give out is more easily seen than conventional torch bulbs. Many of these will be capable of flashing their beam, and flashing lights can often be more noticeable than steady lights. Also, don't rely on your mobile phones. I know, I know some phones come with um, a, a, what they call the flashlight if... Uh, if you use some things or or, or or the handy torch on on other apps um which uses the um the flash from the camera um of the, the problem you can face with this is that the the battery will suddenly die without you realizing it and before you know it you are then left no phone no light no means of contact and you're still in the dark somewhere so try not to rely on your phone and the final thing is to walk where you can be seen Although I don't expect people to walk in the middle of the road, um, even if no footpath is as, as that is foolish. Um, 
but it's equally foolish uh, to remain in the banks and hedgerows where drivers would find it hard to spot you, even if they were expecting you to be there. Uh, James, if you, uh, uh, if there is no um, footpath present, which side of the uh, road should somebody walk? Well, there's no single hard and fast rule to observe, other than to say that you should walk where you can best be seen. Again, th- this links into um, uh, what I covered previously about making yourself more visible. Um, on a straight road, it's easy in that you ought to walk, walk on the right-hand side where you'll be facing the oncoming traffic. Um, this is assuming so you can see what's coming towards you, they can, uh, they can hopefully see you quite early on, you can take... Um, action to um, avoid collision and to generally keep yourself safer. Um, the problem comes when you approach a bend, especially if you're walking on a country road, perhaps with hedging or a high bank running alongside. If the road bends to the right, you should consider crossing the road so that you'll be walking on the outside of the bend. This is because oncoming traffic uh, from in front of you will often stick close to the near side of the road to give as much clearance as possible to any traffic coming towards them. Um, so this is so that they can avoid collisions. If you didn't cross over uh, to keep on the outside of the bend, you would risk being run over by those drivers who hug the near side edge. You must, of course, keep very aware from any traffic coming from behind you and be prepared to stop, turn sideways and stand still to allow the traffic to pass by. I'm aware that some advice clings to the rule that you should always walk to the right to face oncoming traffic, but this does increase the risk to yourself on the right-hand bends. Left hand bends are not so much of a problem as by facing the oncoming traffic you will stay on the outside of the bend where you are always most visible. James, I know you wanted to cover a uh, cycle safety next. Yes, indeed. Uh, another aspect of road safety isn't just um, reducing uh, pedestrian casualties but also um, things about uh, covering um, uh, pedal cycles, bi- bikes and that kind of thing. Um, and some, some of the stuff that is advisable to have um, on on uh, this mode of transport, um, which will reduce the chance of you uh, being being involved in a collision. Um, so the, 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 the one of the most obvious one is obviously lights. Um, at night, uh, you can obviously you can uh, need your lights to be able to see where you're going. People need to be able to see you. Um, you need to make sure that your batteries are fully charged and your bulbs or your LEDs work. And you need a white static for the front and red for the back. Um, LEDs are far more reliable than bulbs and can give out a much brighter and clearer light as well as lasting for a longer period of time. Cycle helmets. Um, I know wearing a helmet might not be cool for the kids. Um, I used to hate wearing mine when when, when I was younger. But helmets save lives. They are designed to take an impact away from the skull, preventing serious injury. Um, You need to check to see if the helmet has got any cracks or any other visible defects. If it has, consider replacing it, as it's taken a blow somewhere to weaken it, and this may then cause you an injury if you were to come off of your bike. Um, Other safety clothing includes uh, a high-vis jacket or a sash. Uh, It's more visible, especially at night, as I've I've mentioned earlier, it makes it more visible. Um, These can be picked up relatively inexpensively from a cycle shop or any motoring retailer, who sells breakdown kits for cars. I mean, not even necessarily in a breakdown kit. Most of the European legislations state that you need to have uh, a high-vis um, within reach of the driver, so they sell them individually. Um, take the time to uh, go and get one and, and reduce the chance. Um, maintenance. I mean, you, you, you need to look after uh, the bike, obviously. I mean, you've got you, you know, things like your brakes, your tyres, your gears, anything like that. They all need checking so that they don't let you down. If your bike tyre is looking a bit bald and the tread is barely visible, it does have the same effect as the car tyre, which is in the same state, and your slowing distance may again be affected. Consider getting it replaced. And, uh, James, I know you wanted to cover um, boxes and packaging uh, left out for collection. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, people often leave boxes of packaging outside their houses awaiting collection by um, dustbin teams. Um, this can give valuable cro- uh, clues to crooks um, when new valuable items are indoors, uh, ready for them to steal. Um, this is especially true at Christmas time. I mean, um, Christmas is only uh, just, just over just over seven, seven weekends away. Um, and... Uh, Basically, many crooks patrol residential areas, especially for the purpose of gaining intelligence on such matters. But whether it's Christmas or not, be aware that others might have an unhealthy interest in what you throw away. 
Very often, packaging can be torn up into pieces small enough to go into a wheelie bin. Often, such packaging can be taken to the local recycling facility um, and disposed of immediately after, after the festivities, thus removing any chance of clues being handed out to crooks. Um, televisions, electrical equipment and other large items can generally be delivered and set up by the retailer, who will also remove the unwanted packaging. Take advantage of this um, when you can thus remove all evidence of the new goods the moment they are in place. Neither should you leave the old television or DVD player, etc., on show waiting collection, as this too implies that a new piece of equipment has been, or will soon be, bought. By giving some thought to the matter, you will soon see how obvious it becomes to outsiders uh, that you have just purchased some new equipment that will provide a thief with something to sell to fund their lifestyles. Deny them the opportunity of stealing your goods by not letting them know how much... Um, about them in the first place. Also, shred your bank details and then mix them up as much as possible as some rubbish collections have clear bags. Take trouble to remove clues of this type. Oh, and James, before you go, I just wondered if you could go over those useful contact details for our listeners. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I mentioned earlier a website uh, for Kent County Council. Um, the link to uh, the Community Warden site is uh, kent.gov.uk. Uh, forward slash community wardens obviously if you take out the community wardens bit that will take you through to Kent County Council um, from there you'll be able to contact uh, numerous different services and it's obviously including uh, the wardens themselves there's a link on there with all the different areas all the different warden teams etc um, you'll also be able to get hold of people like Kent Highways um, they've they've actually just got themselves a new number uh, which is uh, 03000 that's um, 03000 um, 418181 I'll say it once more that's um, uh, 03000 418181 um, obviously we've got uh, Kent Police who's available on uh, 101 for non-emergency and obviously three nines for crime in progress threats of life etc and uh, then we've got uh, Swarbrick Council which is on uh, 01795 417850. James, as always, it's great to have you here at the Monday Night Community Show. Thank you very much for uh, coming along. That's right, Daniel. Thank you very much for inviting me, and uh, no doubt I'll probably see you again in the uh, new year. Yeah, it seems hard to believe, but yeah, we'll see you in the new year. <laughs> That's James Crane from the Kent County Council Community Wardens this evening.